uh, dear friends good evening one and all uh, those who are watching through the pure facebook urology forum uh, we are discussing every other day some surgical technique related to the urology similarly today we are focusing on a nucleation of the prostate you might have listened many presentations but today what we are not uh, talking what we are talking about is not only pomium laser not only tulium fiber laser not only tulium yag laser it is uh, our bipolar nucleation it is basically principles of uh, anatomical endo uh, nucleation a nucleation procedure so in true endoscope everybody is doing a nucleation now 3 years back uh, 5 years back the issue was the 100 watts laser was very costly not everybody could afford and everybody thinks that uh, monopolar trp can do the job and bipolar trp is still safer but as the time pass on uh people are accepting that more than 70 80 grams in monopolar or bipolar it will take time that also will take time there also some amount of bleeding because you are not going by plane you are cutting through the gland and at the end of the day whether you do in 1 hour 1 and a half or 2 hours you will have a full bucket uh, filled with uh, a blood uh, in a large vascular glands and these type of glands have increased recently because of the deuteroid usage and significant uh, Uh, reduction of the indications in the beginning part of the prostate that ultimately shows that anatomical volume of the prostate for surgical conditions has increased so today uh, taking this in point into consideration i have invited dr ajay bandarkar sir uh, who is a well known uh, urologist and senior urologist from the western part of the urology society and uh, that is from the vadodara gujarat and uh, i personally know sir for last 15 years who is very interested in teaching and uh, few people who have settled in the uh, other than metropolitan cities and then concentrated on the subject and keep on focusing and updating the academic uh, uh, knowledge and sharing also lot of conferences he go operate and even he participate in moderation even if he is sometimes not faculty attended conferences in the national level and keep on uh, in the in the discussion so uh, good evening sir ajay bandarkar sir good evening chandramohan uh, sir thank you for accepting the invitation uh, briefly i wanted to know about your career you did your mbbs from which place sir hi i did my mbbs and ms general surgery from vadodara medical college so oh, where i practice i did my college primary college education as well as surgical post graduation after surgery we all wanted to get into urology program so the nadiyad was the nearest place and i was fortunate to get into the nadiyad program at that oh. time the academic program was not there in nadiyad but i was working as a senior resident there yes sir there i worked for two years and from there i started you know trying to get into a mch program and subsequently in 1991 i could get into mch program at manipal kmc oh. and i did my three years of urology from manipal two years from uh nadia so total 5 years of training so that gave me enough confidence to start my own practice so, so i came back to baroda and immediately started my own practice so but, uh, baroda is a place uh, which is between uh, bombay and nadia yes 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 i think i think the second largest city of gujarat so next to ahmedabad baroda is a very popular uh, city in gujarat and it is bigger than surat now population wise it may be you know surat is taking over but uh, traditionally uh, traditionally city wise if you look at after ahmedabad people look at baroda so uh, you, you you are the first urologist of baroda official no, no i was eighth or ninth urologist now uh, we are 36 plus so it's a district it's a district at quarter big a district at quarter it's a big district it's a big, big city and big district big, i think more than the uh, population yeah Uh, this comes on the board when you go to nadia next uh, vadodara is comes on yes, the high first you will cross vadodara and then nadia nadia is between ahmedabad and baroda okay 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 so it is uh, still nearer than uh, um, uh, yeah yeah still nearer that uh, highway express highway it is one yes, of the one of the best express highways between ahmedabad and baroda we, connecting we, initially four lane or six lane highway So who was your mentor in uh, uh, in uh, Vadodara when you were doing surgery? Who motivated you as a boss? Dr. Who Snehal was your? We used to look at him, Dr. Snehal Patel. He was a famous urologist 
attends to nadiar and he was also practicing in baroda so looking at him i think we wanted we got inspiration and with his he is also that sneha patel sir is also from nadiar yeah yeah i think he is no more but uh, uh, basically uh, with his help only i joined nadiar and once i joined nadiar you know dr mahesh desai sir is the mentor and guide and teacher for in manipal who was your teacher and dr p venugopal so this before joining manipal i was under dr mahesh desai and then at manipal dr p venugopal he is the ultimate guru and boss for us so he taught uh, me what was the what was the unique feature of venugopal sir who made so much difference in academic uh, what what was the unique feature of him i don't know whether you know about him or not but he is the great teacher he used to travel a lot in his peak time and even at the airport also in the spare time he used to conduct clinics so he was so much passionate about teaching he used to have a seminar every day 8 o'clock sharp in the morning every day and every sunday 8 to 12 so i think teaching even today he is doing that euro education group and Fantastic. Yesterday, yesterday I got a message from sir saying that you are doing good job in pure, and you, because you don't have time, you please read this uh, Oliver Traxler article, and I hope it will be beneficial. I will be sending this type of articles at the age of eighty-five. Yes, my yes. God, and he is fantastic in keeping touch, and especially in academics. So we learned a lot of things about the urology academics from him. And does he sleep in the afternoon or night? He will be always active and uh, moving. moving man i don't think that in our residency we are we are allowed to go out of for the lunch also that was his favorite not me is my residency have no time from morning to night so and which, uh, which surgery was his favorite surgery i think he was a good reconstructive surgeon and he used to dedicate a lot of time for the pediatric urology good temperament don't ask me that those things you <laughs> 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 are all scared of him <laughs> We are all scared of him. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, because he is a very well-known figure. Every he, you know, sir, he watches all these programs. I, uh, I am sure he will be watching. I know, I know. He is happy about. Yeah, uh, he especially his oh, students. He, yeah, he, he will all always all watch his students. He, yeah, he is connected with the pure, and he, he keeps close watch with his uh, uh, email as well as the Facebook. Asking his girlfriend uh, was there. He, he sorry, I, I don't mind about asking about you because. Your teacher also reflects uh, your attitude. Two big uh, bosses, Mahesh Deshai sir and Venu Gopal, have trained you. I am really fortunate. Now I will introduce you officially, and then I will hand over the program uh, uh, to you, sir. Thank you once again for being with us. So, dear friends, uh, pure urology, anatomical endoscopic enucleation of the prostate. To be honest, Dr. Ajay Bandarkar sir is very good. Actually, he is the one who started this uh, enucleation very early. And one more thing is that he is well versed with RIRS uh, as well as PCL also. All the primary endo urology, which is uh, in the private practice, is very good. Uh, I know personally that he is a consultant urologist, uh, Sujay Urology Hospital, Vadodara, Gujarat. He was extensively trained in subspecialty of urology, endo urology, ESWL, reconstructive urology, uro oncology, uro dynamics, and andrology. He was among all the first few urologists who started using homium laser for BPH and stone disease twenty years ago. He has performed more than three thousand holeps and uh, nearly thousand flexible urethroscopes for calculus disease. He also has a privilege of having used uh, various energy sources like thulium laser, diode laser, and bipolar TURP for BPH. He also has vast experience of bipolar enucleation of prostate. He has participated as a faculty to conduct operative workshops in laser surgery at a national level. He regularly participates at regional, national, and international conferences. This I mentioned is very active too. Even in the nights, also he mingles with people and very jovial. He is an ex uh, executive council member of Urology Society of India, and he has served as executive council member, treasurer, and honorary secretary of Urology Society of India, West Zone. So that is uh, already is in the. a line to serve the society through the urology society of india so with this uh, i am fortunate to have a talk on this important topic over to you ajay bandar ka sir i'll share my screen hmm. yes sir please sir we 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 can see your screen clearly and we can hear the voice okay so at the outset i would like to thank dr chandra mohan for giving me this uh, wonderful opportunity to connect with all the colleagues in the urological uh, field and uh, the topic he has given me is i think one of the most dearest topic to me uh, about the anatomical endoscopic enucleation of the prostate techniques and challenges 
uh yeah what chandramohan said is right that i was one of the few ones in 2001 i was looking for options for urp and laser prostatectomy was always attracting me that was a time when i think peter gilling just published his initial studies and you know i was trying to explore and we acquired 100 watt machine for one trust hospital and then i started doing my inoculation of the prostate by the holmium laser it was like chandramohan i'm going to tell you that it was like an eclavia training you know i was just yeah, i do, I do. do there were no workshops being demonstrating the techniques and tricks and tricks and all yeah. that we used to get all those cds you know in the endocrinology journal yeah. the compact disc of techniques will yeah. be i must tell you sorry to interrupt dr mm -hmm. uh, sorry, dr pankaj maheshwari and dr uh, anil varshna sir have gone there you are the third person who who learnt it directly from the videos and you have continued practicing uh, without uh, uh, bothering about showing to the uh, should to the world for few years you are the underdog at that era uh, after i came to know in the conferences the way you are uh, answering and questions i can understand how much effort you have put in the beginning by seeing these videos i can easily understand sir yes so i think that, that was the era when you know whole was uh, just becoming popular and i also went to dr you know dr bapat at pune before starting my to few uh, watch few cases and then started on my own that was in 2003 and 4 i think i purchased my own laser machine and uh, i think 2007 i purchased the gyrus uh, machine also for the bipolar so that attracted me because peter gilling himself published a paper if you are aware in 2006 yes. about the bipolar inoculation effort he did with the needle electrode so this is how you know holmium laser and bipolar energy has attracted me to do the good inoculation so I have a certain videos which are edited. Some of the videos are, you know, just uh, unedited videos. So you can interrupt me anytime if you yes, want. Sir, yes, sir. As we are all aware that the goals of surgical treatment in BPH is what? We want a wide open prosthetic fossa at the end of the procedure. With a minimum morbidity, of course, we should have the least of the blood loss during the procedure and the continence has to be preserved at any cost. And the post-operative recovery we want, we want fast. There are various definitions about the recovery. Somebody wants to go home the same day, the next day or what, it, depending on the private practice conditions. But I think recovery has to be uneventful. And at the end of the day, the procedure should give us a long-term efficiency in the form that retreatment rate should be minimum. So this is how we should be treating the surgical. Uh, surgically, we should be treating the BPH. Over the last one century, we have seen the treatment modalities have moved like a pendulum from enucleation to resection. 100 years we are doing enucleation by open prostatectomy. Then we shifted for last 50 years to a resection. And the, again, we are going back to enucleation. So there has to be a, some advantage in doing an enucleation of the prostate for sure. There are in between vapo resection, vapo enucleation kind of techniques. But I think every technique works as long as it gives an effic efficient outcome talking about prostate enucleation techniques i think we can say that from blunt to sharp blunt test uh, thing which we use is a finger during the open surgery transphagically but the cystoscope beak can be used which is the blunt but then as you go you use a bipolar electrode or a spatula or a button this is slightly sharper but the sharp pulsed laser and I think continuous wave laser is the sharpest energy which can be used to inoculate the prostatic adenoma. Anatomical endoscopic inoculation of the prostate, it is accomplished endoscopically in respect of the energy source. This is how we define it. And energy source can be a bipolar energy or a holmium Yag energy, coulomb or green light laser to inoculate and cauterize the fossa. But the most important is that a mechanical force is an appropriate, an appropriate plane is an integral part of the technique of endoscopic enucleation, transvasical endoscopic enucleation. We talk about all these things, you know why? Because in the later, after about 2005 or 6, I think you have seen Liu uh, from China demonstrating transurethral endoscopic enucleation as well as resection of the prostate. This is where the confidence of enucleating the prosthetic adenoma by a blunt method came and uh, but unfortunately not many people could you know replicate his results or his technique 
by using a beak of a cystoscope and inoculating the adenoma. So wonderful he used to do that. I think officially he published his large experience in the Journal of Urology in 2010. And, but you know what, Chandra Mohan, that there is no definitive technique or a single technique of doing a bipolar inoculation. So various terminologies are being used, TUEB, TUERT, TUEB is something, you know, the Japanese people who, Hirasawa, who popularized the spatula to do that mechanical job of inoculation and the spatula also did not last long or it never became so popular because again it was very challenging and not many people could replicate that particular technique of inoculation. Coming back to holmium laser inoculation of the prostate, that is whole episode anatomical endoscopic inoculation for sure. And it is the most extensively studied, evaluated, compared, criticized, but ultimately accepted treatment modality for obstructive VPS. Now, if you see the AUA guidelines, EAU guidelines for a large prostate, it has almost always replaced the open prostatectomy. So last, I think huge or large prostate, Volume laser inoculation of the prostate is the mainstay of the treatment. It is safe in coagulopathies. There are umpteen number of papers and publications of its advantage in comorbid condition and because uh, it is the, uh, I think, most hemostatic laser also. Another important feature about the whole app is it is size independent. So you don't need to, you know, have a big prostate to inoculate. You can even inoculate a 25 grams or a 30 gram prostate. It becomes difficult to justify whether you need to do an inoculation procedure for a 25, 30 gram prostate or a 40 gram prostate. Those who are really a good expert resectionist. But the holmium laser inoculation of the prostate is size independent for sure. It is durable. There are, uh, I think, El Hirali is the one who published 18 years of follow up of the, his patients, and it is more than 20 years uh, durable. So, beyond doubt, initially, in early 2000, people were doubting that this is not going to last long and we will have a lot of recurrent, uh, you know, uh, recurrence of the BPH, but it never happened. And uh, it is reproducible because now you see more than 200 centers in India itself are doing the whole, whole medium laser inoculation. And cost effectiveness, we can talk about it later, but I think definitely as far as the procedure con concern and the cost about other newer modalities are coming up. I think compared to that, the holmium laser inoculation prostate is definitely cost effective. But then it gives us a chance to think that why it did not become popular. If you look at the literature published in America, I think the whole app is not very popular. Even recently published papers, they say that the whole app is the least adopted modality of surgical modality of the BPS treatment. Why? Because of the learning curve. I think there is one more slide which I missed here. Yeah. The limitations of the whole app are initially it was thought that it is the longer operative time which permits. Yes, of course, if you want to change over to something which is unusual or something new procedure, it is going to take a longer operative time. But I think over a period of time, once you overcome the learning curve, I think operative time is less compared to TURP. I, I can prove that and I can vouch on that. Yes, stress swimmer incontinence is one of the biggest drawback of a polyp or any inoculation procedure because you are working very close to the sphincter unit and you are working with a mechanical force, manipulation of the scope to you know, inoculate the edema from the sphincter towards the bladder neck. So it ultimately stretches the sphincter and stress urinary incontinence in a published literature, the range, the incidence is 3% to 42%. And I think ideally it should be lying somewhere. I think the stress urinary incontinence lasting more than three months is less than 2%. But yes, in the initial learning curve, people will, you know, we are afraid of starting the whole app. Only one of the reasons many of my friends have not started whole app because of the uh, fear of stress urinary incontinence. But now we have understood the anatomy of the sphincter. The procedure has been done by so many centers, and we have techniques which has been modified. So we can definitely take care of a stress urinary incontinence post whole app. Steep learning curve is a debatable, you know, point where. Everybody's learning, you know, capacity or a learning, you know, motivation is different. It takes from 20, 25 cases to 50 cases or 100 cases. I will say I kept learning till beyond 200 cases also. So there are basic skills which you can master in 25 to 30. 
cases but very important point, uh, part about the learning curve is that it has to be a proper you know uh, training pro through the training program the day when the teaching institute starts doing a whole of procedures regularly the faculties will do i think the residents will yes, do faster yes and those who do not have a luxury to have get trained by the faculties in the academic institute should go for a mentorship program those who have a patience and they, they, those who have come to me or have come gone to a centers where a good whole lab procedure is being done if they watch if they have, have some hands on i think it is not difficult to learn whole lab it needs just perseverance and patience yeah so ultimately this is what we want to say that the robust training program and mentorship is the key in overcoming the learning curve i will share you know the techniques about the whole lab i think standard technique peter gelling right from the 1998 described the three lobe technique where you put you know this is a, a incision put at the 5 o'clock and then this is an incision which is put at 7 o'clock so that you remove the median lobe by you know detaching the median lobe from the capsule and then join this at the center and then remove that then you would go to the 12 o'clock position and this is standard for years all of you have watched this three lobe technique so there is nothing more i would add to those that knowledge and that yes three lobe technique is the safest technique and those who want to learn or start learning i think this is the best way to start doing a whole lab you remove a median lobe and you be aware about the you know three dimensional view of the prosthetic fossa and the size and the morphology of the prosthetic and if you do a 5 and 7 o'clock incision like this and then you join there that in the midline and you will get the median lobe once you remove the median lobe you feel confident about doing something a uh, good inuclation of course learn coming defining the anterior lobe and then coming and removing the lateral lobe is more challenging but i think over a period of time you will realize that how to play around in that fossa not go beyond the sphincter zone not go you know beyond the capsule with the whole lab perforating the capsule is really very difficult it cannot perforate the capsule so easily because the depth of penetration is hardly 0.1 mm you just have to be little away from the mucosa so you get a good hemostatic area or just be touching so the depth of penetration unless you keep firing at one place it does not perforate the capsule and that is the best and beauty of the holmium laser and uh, precision with the holmium laser is ultimate. what is the laser setting you will be talking about laser setting or here only i should ask setting i think i i started with 60 watts i think 30 and 2 or i even though i have a 100 watt machine i don't go beyond 80 watts so 40 joules and the two i think that's a 40 and 2 so energy and the two joules yes that so, is probably good enough i think i, I uh, once you come closer to the sphincter zone you can reduce the energy settings so that you you know the energy doesn't diffusely go and damage the fibers but you once you have overcome the learning curve we don't go for you know resetting this you know energy and then again starting back at the same in rs we don't do that but only thing is that as the mission gets older as it become weak and you have to increase the setting a basic question i am asking i don't think so no, because i had a lisa laser machine for about 8 years i was the highest user of that machine i think 4600 hours i think that machine i used but it was as effective at the end of lisa uh, is from the health where It, yeah, health care. 80 watt machine I had, and from 2030 onwards I have a lumen. That was good enough uh, homium laser. Absolutely, more than uh, 1800 or 2000 cases were done by laser laser. Yeah, blast, yeah. blast sheet does not go often. Blast the blast sheet. See, the blast shield is the most sensitive part, but it's blessing in disguise. You know, when the blast shield blast shield goes, your machine is protected. If there is a dust between the blast shield and uh, I think the laser attachment and the fiber. the blast shield will be the first one to go if there is a spot in the laser fiber the blast will see blast shield will be first thing to go so the moment the fiber goes you better check the blast shield the blast shield would also would have gone so when you have to change the blast shield and fiber you change simultaneously otherwise if you attach a new fiber and with the damaged blast shield the fiber will also go so this is a protective mechanism for the ultimate generator of the laser machine so blast shield Yeah, of course yes but i don't think that it goes so frequently my 
the laser fiber 550 micron fiber lasts for easily lasts for 50 to 70 cases glass seal yes it depends on the you know uh, various or conditions and the dust and all that has to be controlled and the person who is handling the machine the or staff they should also be very aware how to handle the blast shield and the fiber attachment checking the fiber every time before attaching to the machine so that these are all minor important points for my ot it has become a you know repeated thing oh, yeah. so it is a standard protocol yes sir once this uh, two, uh, I have told you something about the three lobe technique. Now, two lobe technique came because of the Lingaman, you know, in 2008 or 9, a bigger prostate. Why you need to, you come back from bladder neck to the veru by three incisions, it takes some time. So, in absence of a median lobe, you take, a, uh, you adopt a two lobe technique so that you save time. But I think in the data, I did not prove uh, adequately that two lobe technique has any advantage over the three lobe technique safety and good inoculation is more important here i am just going to show you that i am just doing a inoculation uh, i think defining the capsule around the veru montana and defining the posterior capsule like this and once the posterior capsule is defined and then i will you know uh, use the midline incision right from the here if you must have seen from midline six o'clock to veru montana so essentially, you divide uh, entire prostate in two lobes. But this is not possible if the median lobe is present. So the technically, uh, it is no, no. Technically even if the small median lobe, there, you can take it one of the lateral lobes. One of the one of the lateral lobe. So from five o'clock, you can take the median lobe and the right lobe, so that it comes it becomes a one unit. So two lobe technique is just to save a little bit time. I I started I migrated from you know three log technique to two log technique and once you have overcome the learning curve it is not difficult whether you do a two log or three log technique but the thing which I am going to show you in my later presentation is the n block inoculation which I am doing now for last seven eight years I have not you know shifted to any other older technique so this is just to complete the list that this two log technique is something where you know you define the interior capsule posterior capsule and two lobes you inoculate then retrogradely and into the bladder. So this is about the two lobe technique. Something about the bleeding during prolapse. So people have, you know, undue, you know, feeling of safety that there is no bleeding. Yes, if you have seen in the workshops, the prostates which have a chronic prostatitis or a very vascular gland, they do bleed. But one of the basic cause of bleeding is, you know, the poor technique and you know going into the different planes at simultaneously so you don't take care of a blood vessel or a open up a sinus is also possible with the whole game laser once you have gone deep enough here if you see in this video i think there will be it's a vascular gland so wherever you cut there will be some bleeding so if you go beyond your anatomical landmarks or go beyond the capsule and open up the blood vessel it is difficult to uh, control, but ultimately, if you defocus the laser beam and have a patients like this, you know, you keep firing laser with the lower power. So uh, bleeding is less compared to the TRP, which we have seen, but one should not, you know, believe that with the laser, polyam laser inoculation of the prostate, the bleeding is not going to happen. It is going to happen. Average blood loss in my series is from 30 ml to 120 ml and occasionally in some patients, those who are on anticoagulants or something, maybe 200 or 300 ml. Or I hardly transfuse any blood for even high risk patients. But yes, the risk of bleeding is there. Irrigation may have to continue for more than 8 to 10 hours. But the ultimate drop in hemoglobin is not significant in whole. Life. So that is why it is you know popular uh, even in a high risk patients. So the factors which can influence the bleeding can be a size of the prostate, a bigger prostate, a vascular prostate is going to bleed a lot. You may have to manipulate the adenoma so much that it may tear the capsule and then the sinus can bleed. Infection uh, is there. So chronic retention of urine, one of the cause of the large blood vessels at the bladder neck, which can bleed postoperatively. Cancer prostate also do bleed uh, after the whole lift. So, and as I said earlier, the technique related causes of bleeding is also there. So, but I think it is manageable and it is not very high. Issue retrieval is one of the you know most debated points. It was earlier, and now I think we have all learned 
over a period of time that the morcellation is the best way of removing the tissue. Post enucleation tissue retrieval, you know, people were feared of morcellation that you can injure the bladder, this and that. My injury to bladder over a 20 years of prolapse, I have done one or two mucosal injuries. Perforation of the bladder is out of question. It has never happened. So there are set protocols which you have to follow for the morcellation. Keep the bladder full. Keep the hemostasis absolutely perfect. So there is no hindrance in the vision. Keep, you know, the irrigation to channel irrigation running and uh, always be attentive to what is happening at the morcellation blades. I'm not telling you. Sir, uh, I, I have a question here. Yes, uh, usually at the end of the enucleation, unless it is done very well, some amount of bleeders will be there. So you sometimes, uh, you sometimes, uh, sometimes before going for the marcellator, if you use for five minutes without ego, the coagulation with the TURP electrode, it looks very clean and then the marcellation becomes very simple. Do you agree with that? I 100% agree with that. So don't start morcellation unless you are very happy with the hemostasis. And hemostasis, you can do with the, once you gain experience, you don't need to use a loop. But I think ultimately, you are more familiar with the loop, so you end up using the TVR loop. But even with the holmium laser also, you can control the bleeding. If there is a sinus or a small veins which are bleeding, if you keep the bladder full, it doesn't bother you <coughs> for the bleeding part. But the small vessels are oozing, it can be managed with the holmium laser. But I think the ego, as you said, absolutely is important that you should keep your ego aside. Yeah. Doubt, you put in a resectoscope and a loop and do a good hemostasis, you save half, uh, of, uh, time. Out of, time. Time. half of the time in the morcellation because you try to do morcellation in a, you know. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, half it, it, it takes time. Injured. Yes. Yes, yes. That is and morcellation again. I'm uh, I'm publishing one uh, of my series, and there I had a uh, I think uh, argument with a reviewer that my morcellation efficiency is around 13 gram per minute. So it is uh, really very high. The national morcellator you use? At Wolf Pirana. For okay. years and years, and see one of the reason why my morcellation is so efficient and complication less is because I have been using that morcellator for. 20 years. And no, I'm using charge. I have a short uh, period of experience, two years. I'm also comfortable with, uh, as people said, it will take hours. It is not taking 10 to 12 no, minutes. Okay. So that is what the uh, average morcellation efficiency is around 7 to 8 grams. And yeah. for a 40 gram or my, in that particular series, the enucleated tissue weight was 43 grams. So in that, everything around 40, 50 gram of prostate enucleated, Morcellation should not take more than four or five minutes. Yeah. Pirana is, is time tested as well as Torch also is doing well, I think. Yes, yes, yes. All morcellators are good. You just have to be careful about how it works. And yeah. uh, larger prostate, which is inoculated, will have a definitely morcellation issue because some of the prostate will have those beach ball kind of a rounded, very firm nodule kind of an adenomas, which do not get you know, entrapped into the blades, uh, blades, uh, morcellator blades are also old if they are, you are using more than 50 cases that all these beach balls will bother you. So you, it is better to change the blades for a larger prostate. So morcellation, there are tips and tricks is that the clear vision, good, you know, uh, morcellator device and the standard protocol you follow, it is <clears throat> the best way to retrieve the tissue. Another next best way is to resect, but it takes longer time. Longer Fun of enucleation goes away at the moment you use a receptor. Yes, yes, yes. You, yes. It, it, it doesn't give you that, you know, feel confidence and a feel of a good enucleation procedure done. Even for the smaller prostate also, at times I, I'll show you in one of the, my videos in the slides I have seen, I'm doing something differently uh, where I enucleate and then, you know, resect. My enucleation time is eight minutes and my resection time of adenoma is 12 minutes. So it, Some people say that if you leave the gland for two days, it gets... Uh, yeah, that, uh, that I, I do for a larger prostate. Marinated and it becomes softer and then uh, it attracts, it, it comes close and get trapped by the marcellator tip. Absolutely correct because uh, I have seen, uh, I have done twice or thrice a cystotomy for a 250 gram prostate. Then it was again, you know, it was not a good feeling to do a cystotomy yeah, yeah. to the enucleated tissue. So what I started doing was that enucleate in a two-lobe technique, big chunks of the adenoma, you leave it in the bladder for 48 hours. 
So avascular adenoma becomes very soft and the enucleation of that 200 gram very quick. or 150 gram, it takes 15 minutes. It's very easy. So very where in doubt, you do a two-stage procedure and those adenomas do not bother the catheter. Excellent, sir. 200 audience on, on line. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The stress severity in contents, I would like to say something is that the technique of surgery is the prime factor, but you have to be aware about the other factors also. The long-standing diabetes, the very fragile senile, you know, uh, weak patient, uh, non-cooperative patient, the detrusor overactivity, all of these are also the cause of the stress severity incontinence. You must handle those things and, you know, explain to the patient that you will have some stress severity incontinence post-surgery for two to four weeks and larger the prostate, the stress severity incontinence rate increases. But I'm going to tell you, uh, show you my, in my techniques about how to avoid the stress severity incontinence. I think this is the case which I did recently. It's a 100 plus gram prostate with a big, big bladder stone here, more than 3.5 3 centimeter and 110 gram prostate on the eye. This is an unedited video. I'm just going to rush through this video. The point which I want to tell you is that the prolapse course here, this is a prostate fiber I am using for the systolithotrity, 40 and 2, so 80 watts of energy is used to break this uh, stone, big stone. It's a very hard stone. Sir, this is the only thing uh, I I do not accept because you are wasting the energy source here. You might have used the lithotripter to make into very good pieces. Sorry for the negative comment. Uh, please clarify. Because I know it looks beautiful. This fiber wobbles. Now recently paper of Oliver Traxler has come velocity of the optical fiber. Uh, you you have to use a lot of energy to break into small pieces. Whereas litho so what? See for a more than 3 cm uh, size of the bladder stone. If you break it with the 80 watt energy of the laser. If you use a small uh, capacity laser 30 and 20 watt. You will take hours to break this big stone. So there the lithoclast here you see this is unedited video. At 18 minutes, the bladder stone is gone with the suction and everything removal. Uh, this is 13 minutes and 16 minutes, the stone is gone. You, so, have, you, have, you have evacuated these fragments? Yes, yes, absolutely. All of the fragments have gone. That takes time. No, 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 no. Once you, it's like a mini PCNL. You know, this thing, the stone, you have very few fragments left behind. And I started enucleating the adenoma at 19th minute. Here, this is 20, 21 minute and I have started enucleating the adenoma. The point which I want to convey here is that this is a very big prostate and I did a two lobe technique. I started enucleating here and the point which you can see here is that there is a steep curve, upward curve near the trigon. So morphology of the prostate one has to study well and modify your technique, uh, be careful about this. And somewhere here, I think it was there, yeah. Yeah, this is the prostate which looks and no problem. Sir. Take it hardly take any take medial lobe. So what I want to convey the point is that you have to study the shape of the prostate and morphology of the prostate and try to uh, get uh, you know away from the sub uh, subtrigonal dissection. So at bladder neck also you have to be very careful. So keeping the three dimensional view of the prostate uh, fossa is very important during prolapse. Uh, what I observed is uh, no homium. Uh, laser surgeon uses yeah, this, this, this one. This one I, I was yeah. okay. 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 What's that? What's the point? This, you want this, to... this point. See, yeah. there is hardly any median lobe and steep yes. upward curve of the median lobe. Yes, yes. Yes. yes so sir. Here the fossa is very thin. You know, there is a capsule there. You so should you be, have careful. To be careful. Yeah. So these are the things which I just wanted you to note. I was uh, about to ask uh, the. No, I think uh, homium uh, enucleation surgeons will never use force to. Uh, uh, separate the prostate from the capsule, I think. No, yeah. no, no. It's a myth. I, I, I am coming back to that point. Oh, okay. Sorry, I may be premature. Yeah. No, it's okay. Good to ask question. But what I am trying to tell you is that what you are, I am coming to that point. See, this is the article or uh, editorial comment you must have read or many people have read and appreciate yes, it. is is enucleation. In 2016, uh, World Journal of Urology, Herman you know, published this editorial and he was a part of a EAU panel who devised, you know, uh, 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 guidelines and their endoscopic enucleation of the prostate irrespective of the energy source because he started doing a bipolar enucleation of the prostate. 
So this is what uh, uh, bipolar inoculation of the prostate is all about. I will be starting on my you know demonstration on the bipolar also now simultaneously. So this is what I wanted to share that this is a stores made. This is stores is a true bipolar. Uh, all pass is a quasi bipolar. The difference between true and quasi bipolar is that the current passes between the two loops. Here from here the current jumps to a, another electrode which is there parallel to this. So this is true bipolar. Uh, current does not pass through the urethra. In Olympus, it is quasi-bipolar where the current passes through the sheath. So it is supposed to pass through the urethral tissue. Theoretically, it was supposed to damage the urethra and incidence of the picture rate was supposed to be high. But the academic uh, publications or data never supported this. So essentially, what the point I want to convey is that there is no difference between the two bipolar machines. Yeah. This is uh, a shape. The shape is different. The strength of this particular button is also good enough. So if you ask me which bipolar machine, I think both are same. So this button is also good enough. And the button which I am going to show you, which I use, is also an Olympus button, which is an oval button. Before I come to my technique of bipolar inoculation, this is one uh, article which was published in 2019 World Journal of Urology. It's a systemic review article. And uh, it's, it's nicely demonstrating the comparison between the laser and the bipolar and all other inoculations. And people basically this was to you know compare the all lasers versus bipolar and what they have realized that the post-operative recovery efficacy and complication wise there is no difference between bipolar and the laser inoculation. Coming back to the bipolar technique which I would like to demonstrate in detail is that you know I, as I told you earlier I am using an Olympus machine which is a quasi bipolar uh, energy and this is the video which I will show you the tool of technique uh, and here this is a button if you see this is a worn out button so each button will last you about five to six cases easily but then ultimately this plastic cover will go and <laughs> so it's uh, for us you know for our country all these things are very important yes yes and uh, this button uh, i think in the bipolar inoculation also i am uh, marking my distal limit around the way room and you, you must have seen that the, and this is a sprinkle zone here and these are the marks which you know uh, it's very important to mark your uh, distal limit. This is how I mark and then above the very at 12 o'clock you go a little inside so that, that it will take yeah, very, beautiful, very, very beautiful okay. demonstration. So once you mark this all around this is marked by the bipolar uh, coagulation current. And coagulation current. Once you have marked, you use a cutting current so that it will incise. See, this is a cutting current. <coughs> One of the limitation of bipolar energy is that it produces a lot of water bubble. So when you are working in a closed space and a lot of saline gets heated and it becomes an air. So that is the cause of the bubble and it can obscure your vision. So you have to be slow and then manipulate the beak in such a way that the bubble will go away into the bladder. So that's it. But once you incise the mucosa, you go deep. The trick here is that once you get the proper plane here, capsule is supposed to be very close to the in the in the around the Veru Montanum area, capsule is easily accessible. So this is how we all have started and shifted from bladder neck to here. I start all my cases like this. And especially in block technique, I also I do this. So you define the posterior capsule around the Veru Montanum, which is supposed to be very close. And once you've done this with the cutting current, you introduce your beak inside that the gap which you have created between adenoma and capsule. And then, you know, gently rotate, you fix the sheath and the working element, you rotate laterally. So this is the trick of doing a mechanical inoculation or mechanical force. And you said rightly that after having, you know, used this bipolar energy, I started using a mechanical force. Yes. Uh, when there is a tissue like this, you need to cut it with the electrical current. But when it is very easy to inoculate, you find a proper plane, just the gentle mucosal, uh, I think the manipulation of the cystoscope big is good enough to create a good plane between the adenoma and the capsule. But honestly, sir, but honestly, pause it. I have used this, I have used Herman. Uh, pause that video, sir, please. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Sir, uh, I, now I am using thulium fiber laser. I am yet to use 100 watts uh, this thing. The amount of uh, uh, pleasure with uh, laser without using any force in the anatomical plane is the true enucleation is my gut feeling. I, I agree with you. 
I agree with you completely. Even I have been doing whole whole lab for last twenty years, and I am even today also I am doing a whole lab. I do bipolar. I have done a prospective study, so at times I have to do a bipolar enucleation also. Why I am trying to explain you bipolar enucleation is that the luxury of polymer laser acquisition is not there with an every urologist, and we all must you know come out of that. Uh, which x laser or y laser is good for the enucleation we should come out of that mental uh, you know block and do whatever energy source see ultimately what i want to convey here is that the bipolar energy is a good enough see this yes. technique is also as good as laser very good for my pleasure i am really very happy because it is precise yeah. 100% so, the technology yes. science is different the laser is more precise than the bipolar for sure yes. but yes. for us if the bipolar is also doing a good job Why not? You know, do a, see yeah. what crunch uh, 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 which I define at six o'clock from capsule to this is a tool of technique. So here, very you know, safe. Anybody, I would recommend that if you want to start an enucleation program, you if you have a luxury of having an access to a laser, whether it is thulium or a thulium. Honestly, I have not used the thulium fiber laser because I don't have uh, access to the thulium fiber laser. But I feel that. Uh, any energy source is good enough when you your technique is sound so you can you know have your experience with the bipolar also in a similar way the only caution which i want to you know tell uh, viewers is that this plasma bubble no it is unpredictable in a, uh, some of the buttons which is overused so it may go deeper than what you expect so you have to keep a distance between the button and the capsule give that margin it's not as precise what you are trying to tell me is that the laser energy which is good absolutely precise it will never go that is why i earlier said that it will not go beyond 0.1 mm this button is very very uh, has become very very famous and so good for the beginner after some time some time after 2 3 years somehow i i i mean this is my personal uh, you may agree or may not agree uh, the usage of this has decreased by me Uh, you feel that this takes lot lot of time if you wanted to burn the tissue like this in a large gland. Uh, the, uh, uh, if you have to no, enucleate no, no. with, I will I will disagree because here you are combining the see you are not using the electrical energy alone. See in the larger prostate, I have done two hundred and fifty gram prostate with also bipolar. And yeah. Yes, the operative time is longer than the whole lip, but you know it it is still not that high. See, ultimately you have to master a technique. so yeah, yeah. even if you take a longer time it doesn't matter see people are doing bipolar resection for 2 hours yeah yeah and because you are using a normal saline it doesn't again, uh, sir again the discussion point is somebody asked uh, sorry this is an interactive session i uh, love the interaction because it doesn't uh, it doesn't make any one sided uh, duration no. of the uh, sheath is a big big concern for anybody in india 26 uh, is really really Problematic unless patient is on catheter. Twenty-six uh, size, no? Yes, yes, sir. I am coming to that. I am coming to that. I am coming to that point. I am coming to that also. See, yes, sir. It is out. So the bipolar basically this is tool of technique. So you you define. You see, they here. I don't know whether I I hundred percent agree with you that maybe I had a luxury of having a ten or fifteen years of experience of doing bipolar, and then I shifted to bipolar, and my technique of bipolar has. i think i did not see much you know negatives in the bipolar the someone who starts his bipolar right now in inflation will have some difficulties but ultimately all these surgeries will have that kind of a you know uh, for uh, yeah. learning curve for everyone so one has to this is how you know to at the end you know the fossa looks nice and uh, i think the big chunks of the bipolar uh, this is where i'll show you this end of this uh, 250 have watched and this uh, bipolar uh, enucleation at the end of the two lobe technique you will see these two lobes floating in the bladder so this is how what is uh, about the two lobe technique of bipolar the beauty of this is any small projections you can nicely vaporize yes. you can make the fossa yes. smooth and beautiful cauterization with the bipolar is the luxury very you know, luxury theoretically practically both you can cauterize the bleeding better than uh, in the bipolar this is i think i'll skip this video because it is real time on edited uh, recently i may have done this tool of technique and it took about 20 27 minutes for a 
60 gram prostate. So ultimately, the overtime doesn't matter. You have to do a good job, which matters most. And uh, uh, and uh, uh, the the capsule is not a uh, 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 pseudo capsule will be formed with bipolar button after coagulation, and you are not sure you have removed 100% of the gland, like in a nucleation. I'm I'm not saying it against. I am using recently only thulium fiber laser, but I have used for a long time bipolar uh, button Olympus. So it is uh, cannot do such a large one proper plane enucleation of the entire gland. Very difficult, I feel. See what I, I partly agree with you that whenever you are dealing with a larger prostate, no, the prostate is not a one. The transitional zone is full of adenomas. One of the adenoma may be big, but it yes. may be satellite adenomas. Whatever the name you give it to, you know, the baby adenomas, some of the adenomas are, you know, deep into the capsule. So all these things you will encounter, especially when you encounter at the interior part above the Veru Montana, it is going to be difficult to inoculate those. So, but the trick here is that you concentrate on a larger adenoma. You leave behind smaller adenomas attached to the capsule. Don't bother about it. You first get into a proper plane. For any anatomical endoscopic enucleation, not losing the plane is very important. You have to see the beauty of adenoma enucleation transurethrally is that you have to remain between adenoma and the capsule. Once you learn how not to go into a different plane, see, these are the things which you learn over a period of time, but that is the best part of it. And in a larger adenomas where satellite adenomas there embedded into the capsule, leave those capsule, come back to those later. Especially, I'm repeating again that at interior part of the capsule near the Veru Montanum, you will see many satellite adenomas. You under enucleate, you under enucleate, you make an incision at the mucosa and go between the plane which is easily available you enucleate the large part of the prostate and then you come back to those adenomas which look obstructive you can vaporisect or vaporize those yeah. yes yes got it n block enucleation i am going to tell you the two modifications which has helped me in my over the last 10 uh, i think 7 8 years is that you know adopting an n block enucleation that is single loop and uh, the another which technique which I, is a mini hole up i will say that you know using a smaller endoscope so in n block enucleation i will describe here uh, i'll show you this um, steps wise which i have published in video urology journal uh, last year that you know initially i published about with the whole app and then the next article was with the bipolar i'm going to show you the videos about uh, both comparison of uh, this is just how we go for n block enucleation you define the posterior capsule around the Veru Montanum. I will jump these videos just for your, because it may be repetitive at that time. And so this is how we define uh, the posterior capsule around the Veru Montanum in the step one. So this is a stepwise explanation about the end block enucleation that whether you do it with, the, I'm showing you both videos simultaneously so that you can appreciate the difference is that precision definitely help volume laser is better but the whole bipolar is not bad too. At the end of the day, at, at the end of the step one, you end up defining the posterior capsule. This is what the entire capsule, this is where the adenoma, uh, Veru Montanum is. And similarly, with the whole meme laser also, you do the same thing. You define the posterior capsule in the step one. In step two, step two is, you know, defining the interior capsule by you know doing a 12 o'clock incision and taking it further from 12 to uh, you know 2 o'clock this way on the left side and you know 10 o'clock on the right side so this is how we are nesbit technique modified nesbit whatever you call you drop the adenoma from 12 o'clock like this so this is how the step two is that in step one, you define the posterior capsule. In step two, you define the interior capsule. So you, what you, you know, at the end of this procedure is that the adenoma, which is attached laterally between two and five o'clock. So this is how you define the capsule in the step two. And in step three, you join this, you know, anterior posterior lines here near inside the sphincter zone. You incise the mucosa like this in bipolar also, you see, this I'm incising with a current 
cutting current and just sharp incision and separating the adenoma by incising the mucosa is very important because that will reduce the stress on the uh, sphincter fibers here also at right side i am incising see this is the sphincter fiber here and i am incising well inside the sphincter zone with a cutting current incising the mucosa so that you know the attachment of the sphincters is preserved once you get into that then you try to you know inoculate and find a proper plane like this with a mechanical force as much as you can otherwise you just use the sharp edge of the button the advantage of this sharp edge of the button this particular shape is you know i am more familiar maybe i am biased but this is better than the what you know uh, herman loop and the sharp edge cuts so nicely in a precise area so there is but, uh, sir, but you are using lot of uh, uh... Mechanical uh, part of mechanical inoculation. Uh, I don't agree, part sir. That loop gets bent, and within one or two, it is going, sir. It is eight thousand to ten thousand. No, 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 no. I think I think every loop I have used it for at least four to five cases. It all depends on the what setting of the current and how how much. No, sir. You use the current. Not the button losing the. Button. the Not the button losing the the blue part which gets yes, yes, absolutely once this this sheet goes now it is better to discontinue using the discontinue button. and it bends sir uh, with it if you use any mechanical force by junior it bends badly ah uh, so you don't need to use that much of a mechanical force to see it has to be a gentle I don't think that I have bent any of these button loops uh, I have seen the wear and tear of this covering sheet. But bending the loop, that means that you are using too much of a force. No, the third case, it will. The third case, the the strength of the loop is less, sir. I feel, I feel. No, no. I think, see, people are doing inoculation with a larger green, I think, uh, green light fiber. The fiber is thousand micron. Green light, it is supposed to be a vaporizing electrode. But the same fiber mechanical strength, I don't know. I have never used it. But in theory, they do green light laser inoculation of the prostate with what? that fiber which is about 800 or 1000 micron size so if that micro uh, fiber has a mechanical strength i think I, it is the no, no, sir. mechanical strength not to cut even if you are doing little bit of pushing see everybody in in, in the coral star inoculation loop when we do with tfl so nicely you can uh, inoculate like in bipolar uh, button but not button bipolar loop inoculation Bipolar loop inoculation is not popularized over a period of ten years because mechanical force is more more used. Your first video which you have shown hundred watts so nicely only it's like a pen or pencil. But the moment okay. this but this button the top video is laser bottom video is button where you you are using a little bit to push that gland it's in the mid part of the gland that bends the loop sir I have done many that bends the loop. No, but say that I I agree with you partly because the bipolar laser inoculation is difficult to use for a beginner. See, once you get used to the you know uh, planes and the force, how much is needed with the laser. See, the best part of the inoculation is that you learn with laser and then shift to the bipolar. Or yeah. you you know right from the beginning you understand the intricacies of bipolar inoculation and. Keep you know improvising your this thing. So ultimately, you know the investment initial investment cost with the bipolar uh, machine is uh, way less, five times less than the laser any laser machine. So if you really want to get into a inoculation program or do you adopt to shift from TURP to inoculation, I think one of the option is bipolar, and you uh, one must spend some time learning the proper technique. and don't get disheartened by one or two capsular perforations or here and there conversion to trps this is how everybody has learned i even i have learned my yes. conversion rate was 25 to 30% in first one year so all these things are learned with lot of perseverance and patience and in the fourth stage i think i am just trying to you know widen the bladder neck from lateral to medial so you don't go under mining the trigon And you inoculate the adenoma completely into the bladder uh, with the laser as well as the bipolar. So this is how end of the bipolar end block inoculation. You see the entire adenoma is floating in the bladder with the bipolar, and there is no difference between the the force of laser machine uh, laser inoculation and bipolar uh, prosthetic force. So end block technique has advantage that. it has reduced my overtime the inoculation 
time inoculation efficiency has crossed 2 grams per minute. So 60 gram prostate, this is an unedited video of one of my friend who underwent uh, inoculation. He had about 45 gram prostate and this is how unedited video absolutely. And I'm going to show you this, just fast forward this holmium laser inoculation. And yeah. at the end, I'm at the 17 minutes and this is what the 21 minutes. 20, at, at the end of 21 minutes, the entire prostate is inoculated and inside the bladder. And this is how it looks. So end block inoculation has reduced my overtime. Maybe over a period of time, I have gained experience of uh, doing a good inoculation, but end block technique is definitely it reduces the overtime and it gives a nice fossa. And uh, this is how at the end of 22, 22 minutes inoculation and two minutes morselation. This cannot be done by anything other than laser. And uh, the another modification I want to share with you is that this is mini hole. I'm just uh, yeah, yeah, sir. Please come. That term, uh, mini hole. Why? Because this uh, three hundred inner sheath. This is solely set, and this is twenty French inner sheath, twenty two French outer sheath. This is a laser working machine. This is a TUR resection, and uh, this is the again real time video. I am unedited video mini hole, which uh, I recommend. Any laser fiber can be used with this. Yes, yes, yes. This is same as even I think. I, Smaller resectoscope has a better advantage of doing a renucleation because the big size of tip is smaller. You get into the adenomine capsule easily than the 24 or 26. But this is a very valuable information for us. Really valuable information. This is from Sholi. Yeah, this is from Sholi and this is unedited video. And I'm just going to demonstrate that uh, I would like to say that this is, uh, I think, 40 gram prostate and at the end of Sorry, I'm just, I'm just, uh -huh. 19 minutes inoculation was almost over. And this is how you have separated the adenoma from all around. And then the, you can resect, you don't need to use a morselator. So the best part of this particular resectoscope is, uh, I think this uh, set is that you don't violate the urethra so much. And uh, bladder uh, membranous urethral strictures and dilatation and you know stricture rate is less i have been using this for last three years now and uh, my you know stricture urethra things have reduced uh, significantly uh, statistically not clinically hardly you don't get too many stricture urethras after collab but definitely it is urethra friendly resectoscope and the only limitation is that this tur loop you know is very small 22 French uh, sheath and so you have to cut it uh, in a small small pieces so it takes a longer time so if you have to inoculate and reset the over time is increasing but for a smaller gland you don't mind it at the end of 25 26 and 28 minutes all these chips are removed and this is how the osa looks like and then and the urethra absolutely uh, well preserved. The end of so this has revolutionized my inoculation technique in a smaller prostate. Yes, for 80 gram prostate, I can still use this uh, smaller resectoscope. I do a good inoculation job, but ultimately you'll have to go for a morselation and as such also morselation for a 50, 60 gram doesn't take more than 10 minutes. So that much part of the morseloscope is uh, uh, so of course 26 French in size but uh, this is how you you know reduce the stress on the urethra other technique of inoculation thulium and pvp i am not very familiar thulium laser in 2008 i used it was a continuous way laser uh, not the one which you are using right now thulium fiber laser this is original 80 watt thulium laser excellent cutting device but you know this uh, is not an anatomical inoculation because of the good cutting property you go tend to go in between the planes so you end up cutting the adenoma and this was my experience in 2008 or 9 i did 50 cases with this but uh, it's a is equally good laser because it is a vaporizing laser so in you can vaporize faster it is faster than the holmium laser for vaporization high risk prostate and those see ultimately it is getting used to one energy source if you are happy with the thulium fiber laser, 
stick to that and do a good manipulation with that if you are happy with the thulium laser itself stick to that particular technique and do a good manipulation procedure and diode laser also similarly people have a ah, again I, I was going to tell you the diode laser fiber also uses some mechanical force that is not say so in the last slide i would like to convey this is an editorial comment made by none other than peter gilling that question therefore with endoscopic enucleation technique is superior before this question can be answered we need to separate those techniques which merely resect the large tissue fragment so what ultimately he wants to convey is that the pulsed energy pulse laser that is holmium yag laser is good hemostatic as well as you know enucleation laser this is what he published in 2013 but now things have changed in 2012 thank you <clears throat> very nice presentation uh, a lot of audience are online 313 people have seen the program still lot of audience i think after pcnl this is uh, uh, creating lot of interest now i will quickly ask questions rapid fire no explanation please if you don't mind because <laughs> we cross <laughs> one hour uh, the quality of uh, the quality of the youtube video after one hour goes down that's why quick uh, quick questions uh, let it be a good document number one outer access sheath uh, for marcellation is there anything less than 24 french available in the world not possible because not possible. Uh, uh, that's also yeah. not possible not possible number two uh, from your days 15 years back and now what was the you have shown every time 20 minutes 30 minutes 40 minutes hurting all of us because we are taking one hour 21 hour 25 minutes what was five years back your enucleation time for 80 grams of the prostate i think it was one gram per see you look calculate uh, uh, efficiency it is around, one gram around, one, one, around, one, 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 around one hour to 120 minutes yes yes third question I think, uh, <laughs> Larger the prostate, no, no, larger the prostate, less lesser, the lesser the time. If you have been given TURP for 100 grams and prostate enucleation with 100 watts laser, do you think that you can 100% do faster with enucleation? 200%. 200%. Third question The amount of the fluid used in enucleation versus in TURP, nowhere comparable? No issue at all because the Maybe over a period of time, including, I, including including the marcellation fluid aspirated. No, 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 it's not. On an average, how many three liter saline bottle you use for hundred grams prostate, not sixty? Hundred gram prostate, I think eight to seven to eight three liter bottles are used. So it is a yeah. time taken. See how much time you spend. Yeah, yes, sir, I agree. On an average, on an average, with your experience, every case is different. Everything is different. Have you ever landed up in extra peritoneal perforation leading to open drainage? Never. Never. Uh, what is the worst complication you have seen with enucleation, uh, marcellation? I hardly damaged mucosa once or twice, taken a bite, but I realized fast. But no problem. Uh, given choice, all the equipment uh, you use, you choose two, two choices for enucleation, not one. I use TFL, I am finding it very useful because it is at a time stone as well as prostate 35 to 42 lakhs cost one mission for everything. You have been given two, two you have to select two missions, which missions you will select, all gadgets you have, diode, bipolar, TFL, thulium, laser, YAG, everything. So first one what will you choose, second one what will you choose? In the middle of the night you wake me up and ask me, I'll say 100 watt laser, holmium laser, because second, second I want second one which will you second, need? Second I may try my hand on TFL. <laughs> no, 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 one mission which 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 says your heart, uh, which your heart says, mission yes. bipolar. Thulium fiber laser. Thulium fiber laser. Thulium fiber laser. Next, uh, if you feel that uh, you cannot enucleate in a large already half enucleated gland, half enucleated gland on both the sides, it is very difficult to do TURP to completely make it force up pa pa uh, 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 parallel with the previous enucleation area. Do you agree with this? It makes surgery longer duration if you have to stop enucleation in between. I don't know whether you have stopped or not. We have stopped a little, a, a few times when the beginning part. Correct. Because if if you have found difficult to enucleate, there has to be some complication. Some has to, there has to be something which is happening and to overcome that see that is why you have to be very good in open surgery to do a laparoscopic surgery there has to be a rescue procedure learned and mastered first 
Yes. So for all of us, we must remember that all residents should get trained for the TURP and they master the technique and then try to do enucleation. So, the uh, procedure is TURP for sure. Yes, sir. Now, after doing it, last couple of questions, after doing enucleation, a lot of patients will have stress incontinence on day one. In the beginning of practice, we used to sit half an hour and convince, and in the night, we used to feel bad. As we become 15 years old consultant, we know that it will come down. For all the private practitioners, stress incontinence on day one, before five years of practice, before you finish five years of practice is hell of a job. So if it is after 15 days, he may go to other urologist and your name may get spoiled. How do you answer this question? Do you use any medication like duloxetin? Do you depend on the Kegel exercises? I used to go morning, afternoon, evening and then say you, you contract, you contract like that as if I am contracting, I used to show. But even if you do a good enucleation in the large gland, sometimes urine leaks like anything. I think you are absolutely correct. It is a devastating complication for any urologist in the outdoor. If that leaking patient is sitting, he will demoralize two other pre-operating patients. So uh, very important to have a good rapport with the patient. You keep explaining, keep training in that. See, uh, if you have really injured the sphincter at 12 o'clock completely, the chances of recovery is less. Less, less. And you know, you cannot help it. But partial, see, the moment, it's like a radical prostatectomy. See, all yeah. of our radical prostatectomy patients, you ask them that they will be incontinent, but surprisingly- but There is a cancer there. That's no, a cancer. No, no, trying to correlate with that. If yes, sir. Similarly, for a larger prostate, you warn them preoperatively that you will have incontinence. You will have to use diapers in the beginning. but. If within 48 hours, most of them, 90% yes. of my patient will recover and then they will have a confidence. Only there are other factors which are responsible for stress and incontinence. You will have to take care of that and you have to be... La last question, duloxetin, fluoxetin, oxybutynin, tolteridin, do they make uh, early recovery? Not. Tadalafil. It has its own place. In a indicated so if there is a detrusor overactivity which is responsible for a stress urine incontinence yes all this uh, you know and anti cholinergics will any of this will work but for a pure technique related stress urine incontinence nothing works it is only the healing which works at times you have some narrowing at the membrane urethra and stricture helps then you know the flow compromise but the control of the urine takes place so that helps. So ultimately the fossa has to heal, the mucosa will heal and whatever remaining fibers will have some continence. In large glands, to not to injure the ureteric orifice which was not seen in the before of the surgery, which was not seen before the surgery, at the end of the surgery, uh, what are the tips and tricks to avoid laser induced ureteric damage? You have to keep the bladder full, you know, whenever you are working around the bladder neck, no, I, I always advise that you define the landmark early in your enucleation. See, that is why two lobe and three lobe techniques are of much value. You can end up injuring the ureteric orifice doing a single lobe technique where you have not gone to the bladder. Because you are enclosed in a room. Yes. So, in a end block technique, you keep the bladder full whenever you are working in that, you know, posterior plane near the bladder neck. You, you have to make sure that the bladder is full. Don't enucleate at the empty bladder. Great. Stuff. You have, by, by mistake, you have injured the ureteric orifice. Forget about it. Nothing else. Yes, nothing will happen. You can't avulse it. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate the amount of uh, crispness and the confidence uh, of your 16, 20 years of experience in endourology. Really useful session. For your kind information, after Stone, I am after a long time, I am seeing 340 figure on the audience. Uh, it's huge number because this is the 149th program uh, of the pure and uh, I'm really happy that uh, you have excellently made this session. Thank you very much. To be very right? honest, to be very honest Chandra Mohan, Sir. I have lost uh, my you know power of convincing people to shift to Holeb for initial 10 years. I don't bother whether people like it or not. Yeah, yeah no, not convincing, no, no, no convincing. No, no, but, but for the bipolar, I am 100% convinced that if you start adopting a bipolar enucleation early in your career and be you know patient about learning you can learn
See, there is nothing. You people have learned laparoscopy without you know being trained for that. You have learned lap- robotics. So similarly, uh, procedure which is done so frequently in your private clinic, yes, sir, has to make some effort to learn in it. Yeah, only thing now I have come to TFL, sir. I don't think uh, at least well, I. For I me, it doesn't matter. Do me as you are starting this. I am a homium laser fan. I am a homium yeah, yeah. laser fan. For, so me, for the juniors, uh, it's a very valuable yes. message. Exactly. Uh, bipolar button, uh, either Herman loop or the bipolar button loop from Olympus, both are excellent, excellent, good. I, I must tell you, sir, you you were so you were so uh, uh, clear in your message, uh, balancing all the equipment. Uh, really valuable advice. The experience is reflecting very much in your talk. Uh, I am really happy. You have never got biased for anything. You have given importance of all the procedures. I am sure the juniors will really benefit with this video. They will try out. Lot of juniors are trying out with these videos and they are improving, and it will definitely help the patients also, sir. I have submitted my article for publication in Journal of Endurology comparing whole life and bipolar. Very good. And after fourth review, now I submitted yesterday. Hopefully, it will get published. Yeah, yeah. And I, I recommend that that bench. Four, four reviews. Four reviews itself. That post is there. Uh, <laughs> it is true. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. It was enjoyable. Thank you, Chandra Mohan. Thank you. I personally enjoyed interacting with you. Thank you very much, sir.